Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Today, we are discussing what looks at first glance like it might be a moon watch, but this is the Omega Speedmaster Broad Arrow in red gold and steel. An upscale take on a Speedmaster Professional also has some nostalgic nods to the original model of 1957 and its combination of 57 logo Broad Arrow and fidelity to the tried and true Omega Speedmaster formula. 42 millimeters in diameter, it does use the Moonwatch case. You can see that featuring a sapphire crystal on each side, this watch is 13.7 millimeters thick, lugs only, the case is 48.5 millimeters across the wrist. It is 52.9 millimeters end link to end link with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. And you can see that it wears comfortably. It's actually thinner than a standard moon watch, and that's a little bit of a surprise because a standard moon watch is a manual and this is an automatic. Taking a quick look, you can see although it has a little bit of an overhang to its bezel, it should fit underneath most cuffs. It is broad though, with the end links splaying out almost 53 millimeters. I'm gonna recommend this watch on the bracelet for a wrist of 16 centimeters circumference or larger. If you were to put it on a flexible strap, I think 15 would be just fine. Taking a quick look at the bracelet, it's an upscale piece. There's a conforming end link to better mate it to the case. Aesthetically, we have these oval cross sections with polished flanks, and then we have polished intermediates down the center with staggered link alignment. There's a little bit of a taper from the end link down to the clasp. The bracelet's sort of a hybrid of a sports bracelet, a dress bracelet, though make no mistake, it has a great deal of solidity. It feels like a sports bracelet. It just looks like it's got a bit of a, a dress orientation with these rounded off shoulders and intermediates in polish. You can see that all of these removable links are fixed by pins and sleeves, so if you do want to size this bracelet at home, you'll need a block and punch. We have a thick gauge steel, single fold deployment, very similar to what you'd find on a Seamaster Diver 300 meter, albeit without the dive extension. What you do have is two sets of divots and a spring bar, so if you use your strap tool, you can move the uh, bracelet in and out slightly to fine tune the fit. Clicks shut, twin triggers open it up. You can see that the engraving on the clasp remains deep and sharp. And we roll back to the case, liar style lugs. We've known them on Omega watches since the early 60s. The inward bevels, but then also these outward bevels. The outward bevels are polished, and there's a polished bevel that runs from end to end, swelling on the bevels of the outer lug. You can see that we have a longitudinal satin finish on the case. The bezel is made of rose gold. You can see it's polished around its lip. On top, we have a brown bronze aluminum insert. And then we have a sapphire crystal with a dramatic boxed camber to make it look like a plexiglass. But make no mistake, this is a sapphire sandwich of sorts. We've got the shear guard profile with the shear guards for the pushers and the crown that you find on a Speedmaster Professional. And then a considerably upscale dial that references 1957 and the original CK2915, which had a broad arrow at one point in its life as the watch evolved over time, you would see less of the broad arrows, less of the alpha style hands, and the modern moon watch would coalesce. This is, at least in a few details, a throwback to 1957. We also have applied rose gold indices and Omega logo, features that you don't find on a moon watch where printed features are the norm and the standard. This is a much more upscale luxury watch, even by the standards of a luxury watch line. Now we have dished sub-registers. We have chronograph hours, chronograph minutes, constant seconds with a crosshair motif, and then a lovely brown bronze metallic sunburst on the center dial. Take a quick look. Here's something you won't find on a moon watch. Hacking seconds. Here's something else you won't find on a moon watch. A date with a quick set. Notice how the size of the font changes when you jump from single digits to double digits, but it does have a quick set. Taking a quick look at this watch in the dark, it has no lack of luminescence. And when we flip it over, we can see a little bit of a glimpse of auto logerie as we have a blanc pan movement. Well, we have a Frédéric Piguet-based movement, and Frédéric Piguet is manufacture blanc pan. You can see reference 3313 based on the Frédéric Piguet 1285, essentially a thicker, more durable version of the 1185. Lots of upgrades here. It gets an omega coaxial escapement for greater precision, improved 
endurance between services and improve power reserve. Power reserve is 52 hours automatic winding. You can see we have a five position adjusted free sprung balance, the better to help this watch earn a COSC Swiss chronometer certification on top of the coaxial escapement. You can see we've got a column wheel visible, a feature you will not find on a standard moon watch, which uses a cam. Let's have a listen. The column wheel action is very crisp. And you can see we have a chronograph seconds hand that engages without any jump because the vertical clutch has no play. It also creates no additional wear and tear thanks to the vertical clutch. If you want to just leave the chronograph running, you will have no problem with that. You just need to make sure to keep it wound. There's no penalty for running your chrono full time when you've got a vertical clutch system. And that's exactly what we've got here. Column wheel, vertical clutch, five position adjustment, coaxial escapement, You've got the COSC cert and 100 meters of water resistance. Remember, on a standard moon watch, you get only 50. This is 100 and suitable for swimming. Plus, you get a standard of finish that is more impressive than what you'll find on a standard moon watch. This is downright handsome, almost becoming of something that would cost twice as much money. But again, it does have a Blanc Pen pedigree. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.